projects such as HackRF, <laughs> UberTooth, <laughs> and how to say like Daisha <laughs> projects. Michael Austin with his new project, <laughs> the Unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I need more booze too. Yeah. Here's your shot. Here's your shot. Here's your shot. Oh, thank you. All right. All right. Check one. Check two. Check three. Check. Can you hear me? So, Can't even hear myself. So here's this, and then this is for the the mic that's attached here is for the recording. Oh, I see. They're okay. separate. Yes. So I got to talk into this one. And that one. Okay. All right. Three by four eighty works great on these projectors, and I don't have time for more pixels anyway. So this this works. This works. Fire talk. All right. This is Great Fet, a preview. I'm talking about a new project, uh, something I'm working on right now, and uh, hopefully we'll be. Uh, generally available for everyone uh, to enjoy in the coming months. The, uh, uh, the Great Fet project is, of course, based on my Good Fet project. I say my Good Fet project. Some of you may have the incorrect impression that Good Fet is Travis Goodspeed's project. Yes, I had that impression. Yeah. Well, it, it was. It was until he sold it to me for $5 in Las Vegas. <laughs> I, I'm not saying if alcohol is involved or not. Uh, but uh, GoodFed is a fantastic project, and uh, and actually was my first surface mount soldering that I ever did. Before I designed any of the stuff that we were talking about earlier, uh, I got started in electronics by soldering up a, a circuit board that Travis gave me for free uh, here at Schmookon. And um, and it was one, it might have been this uh, version of GoodFet. There have been many. Um, it was at least one very similar to this. And it allowed me to get started in hacking embedded electronics and all kinds of interesting hardware hacking that I, I didn't realize was, was available to me before Travis helped me uh, bridge that gap and, and reach across and start working with uh, embedded systems. So uh, one of the fantastic things about GoodFet is that you plug it in to a computer's USB port, and then on that computer, like your laptop, uh, you, can, you can run a simple command line tool or a Python shell and easily interact with whatever the GoodFet is, can, is wired up to. And that ease of use is really important to me that uh, you can connect it to, wire it up to anything, and then control it from a Python shell or your own short Python program or various command line tools. And uh, it, it really opens the door to uh, a, a lot of easy hardware hacking and embedded systems hacking. Um, so some of the things that I've used it for, like I, I use it for uh, programming the I Am Me, my favorite pink toy. Um, and uh, this was one of the first embedded uh, development projects I ever did, and it was enabled by having a good fit. Uh, I, when I was doing early development of the HackRF project, I had all these development boards that I designed all hooked together, and, and I had to bootstrap the whole process and, and like write firmware onto a flash chip just for my own development project. And the way I did that on my very first HackRF prototype boards was by using a GoodFet. I just wired up a GoodFet to the flash chip that was going on my board and, uh, and installed some test firmware. And that's how the whole HackRF firmware got bootstrapped. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the potential uses for GoodFet are, are extremely wide. Um, and many of you have seen some good fit variants, of which there have been dozens. Uh, the most famous probably being the Face Dancer. The Face Dancer looks a lot like uh, the original good fits, but it has this extra USB port on there. And the Face Dancer allows you to uh, interface with another USB, uh, a host, USB host. So 
you are using the good fit as a USB peripheral, and it is acting as a peripheral to another host, a target host, and it allows you to like implement or emulate a USB device in software really easily on your laptop while you're connected to. And people have uh, found all sorts of, of interesting bugs in uh, in USB stacks, for example, using this technique. And uh, this is just one of many variants of the GoodFet project. And the fact that we've had so many variants is one of the things that led me to work on GreatFet. And uh, I first talked to Travis about doing this some years back, but um, one of the key reasons why I was interested in making a, a new variant that was like a, a, a pretty, pretty big departure from the original GoodFet designs is because of that big chip in the middle. That microcontroller from Texas Instruments is, uh, I think it's about $15 if you buy just one of them. Uh, if you buy a thousand of them, it's about ten dollars a piece, which is pretty expensive for a microcontroller in that class. And and uh, Travis did a, a brilliant thing here when he uh, when he designed the original GoodFet, he was trying to give boards away and get people to build their own. And and, and Texas Instruments, even though the, they sell these microcontrollers at kind of a high price. Uh, Texas Instruments makes them available for free. You can get samples. You can get one or two free samples from Texas Instruments. Actually, I think they're they're clamping down on that a little bit. But uh, at least in the past, you've been able to very easily, anybody can just go to their website, ask for two free samples, and they'll get them in the mail. So, so this particular selection of a microcontroller to base this project on was brilliant for making it easy for people to build their own. But it was horrible if you wanted to do volume manufacturing and sell the thing at a reasonable price. So uh, there were a lot of other choices that could be used to build this hardware around. Uh, also, FTDI sucks. Um, the, uh, so this was my first effort at something that I started to call Great Fet briefly, but nobody has one of these. Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, these don't really exist anywhere, uh, but I, I put it here for historical reasons because this was kind of my first thought at having having a next generation good fit. What could a next generation good fit be like? And and one of the things that I wanted to do was have an expansion interface. So there were a whole bunch of pins here that. Uh, oh, and I'm sorry, you guys, uh, that you can't see it because this talk is full of porn. Uh, <laughs> The best kind of porn is is circuit board porn, right? Am I wrong? All right. It's also full of hugs, right? You back me up on this, right? Right. Okay. Um, so uh, so I wanted to uh, I wanted to make something that was good fit like, but had a lower cost microcontroller and be somewhat higher performing and not too much biz bigger physically, but have this expansion interface. And a key reason I wanted an expansion interface was we could, so we could do things like Face Dancer or some of the wireless variants of GoodFet. Uh, we've had all these different variants of GoodFet in the past that have all been sep whole separate boards, each of which has its own software, and the software got really messy. And it would be really nice if instead of having a whole bunch of variants of the main board, we have one main board and several different add-on boards. And uh, this project didn't go very far, this, this one that was based on the LPC uh, 1343. Uh, the, I did have uh, hundreds of them manufactured, actually, um, as a conference badge for H2HC in Brazil, uh, which was, would have been really cool. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, we think China number one, right? Yeah, China number one. The Brazilian federal po police do not agree. Okay, <laughs> uh, we have, I think there were 500 of them, and they were seized at the border and uh, probably destroyed. No one knows anything about their whereabouts at this point. So we pay the wrong people. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, uh, so this project then, I, I was kind of down about this whole thing. Like I made hundreds of them, and then they got seized, and nobody had them, and. And I was kind of de depressed about it. I was like, oh, I don't even know if this is the right idea. Anyway, and then the project just kind of languished for a while. And, 
And it, it just wasn't very compelling to me when I thought, well, well let's, let's revive the Great Vet Project and, and make it into a commercial thing. And yeah, it'll be open source hardware and people can build their own, but we'll also be able to manufacture it at a reasonable cost and sell it to people who don't want to build their own, uh, which is kind of the whole thing that I do these days. And, uh, and uh, I, I just didn't feel like it was a, a big enough leap forward to be... Uh, to, to supplant the, the existing good fit designs. And so I started making something greater. And what I made that was greater is now what we call great fit. And it consists of a variety of different boards. Uh, the main one you see there that's just below center, uh, code name Azalea, great fit it's Azalea. The one with the big chip, big black chip on it. That is the main board. That is, uh, the actual great fit. Uh, design. It is physically bigger uh, than any previous good fit, I think, uh, but it still fits in the palm of your hand. Uh, and it's a uh, it's, uh, prototype. These are all prototypes. And then uh, you'll notice that there are a bunch of other boards there too, and those are all add-on boards, which are stackable. And uh, one of the things that makes Great Fit greater is that it uses a, a much beefier microcontroller. It's actually the same microcontroller that is in HackRF1, which has a high-speed USB interface, with an, and we have an open-source USB stack for it that performs very well. We get 43 megabytes per second uh, reliably over this, over this USB port. And that is a significant step up in throughput compared to any good fit design that's existed in the past. It enables, potentially, a lot of interesting applications that, that wouldn't be possible without that like, order of magnitude increase in throughput over the USB interface. And it, we also have a 100-pin expansion header. A whole lot of pins and interesting stuff that's accessible via those pins. And so we can make all kinds of different add-on boards that do interesting things. Also, you'll notice that on the right-hand side of Azalea, or the, the opposite side from the uh, the host port, there is a target USB port. Built in to the main board is a, a USB port that can be used for face dancer type stuff. So you don't actually need an add-on to do face dancer -y stuff. That is built into the, the base board. It's a whole lot of extra stuff. Now, also, the CPU runs at 200 megahertz, which is kind of ridiculous for a little microcontroller that costs like half what the cost of the microcontroller on GoodFed is. All this stuff it adds up to actually still cheaper to mass produce than the original good fit design. It's a little bit more complicated if you want to solder it up on your own, but it is possible to do so, but there are more components. Um, but it is very affordable to manufacture uh, at scale. So uh, I, th some of the things that are accessible to the uh, uh, to that expansion interface uh, are these various peripherals that are built into that LPC 4300 microcontroller, and uh, I'll just mention a few of them. Um, like SPI and I squared C are interfaces that you often find uh, in embedded systems, like communication to flash memory, for example. Uh, UART's uh, RMII that's uh, an Ethernet interface, 10100 Ethernet interface. Uh, there, there are ADCs and DACs, uh, analog to digital converters, digital to analog converters. Uh, you could you could make a, a uh, add-on called a, we, we call our add-ons, by the way, uh, neighbors. They're uh, every every neighbor you, you add on to it is, a, is stackable. Um, and uh, there are all these different uh, interfaces, and some of these are kind of special, like, like SCT and SGPIO there at the bottom. Uh, those are sort of unusual peripherals that this microcontroller has, and, and the SGPIO peripheral is actually one of the reasons why we selected this chip for the HackRF project in the first place. It's because it, it has a, it's a very flexible parallel interface that lets you talk to a lot of different things at a pretty high speed, and that's important if you're uh, wanting to implement something uh, using high-speed USB. And so one of the things I, I like to think that this will be in the future is your own custom high-speed USB device. Whatever it is that you want to do as a peripheral that talks very quickly to your host computer, uh, you should be able to do with GreatFed. And uh, the, the neighbor stacking is kind of like Arduino shields, uh, except the model is a little bit different because 
instead of, instead of stacking on capabilities onto an embedded platform with a fairly slow microcontroller, uh, you're stacking capabilities onto a peripheral of your host computer that you can control from a Python shell or from the command line. And I think that that makes it much more attractive and easier to use, especially for folks in our community, uh, for all kinds of hardware hacking, wireless hacking. Uh, the, the existing neighbors that we have right now are, aren't very many. One of them is a spring pin interface for programming the IME. One of them is a, a 2.4 gigahertz wireless interface. Uh, I'm working on an infrared interface, all kinds of different things like that. So. Uh, uh, GreatScottGadgets.com, that's uh, my, web my company's website, we're, we're working on this. Uh, status right now is hardware design is pretty stable, and uh, if anyone, uh, oh, oh, and the status of the firmware is that it doesn't exist yet, um, except that we have a lot of code uh, from other projects like HackRF that kind of demonstrates that what we want to do can be done. Um, Dominic Spill is leading the firmware development effort right now. Um, Yay, Dom. And uh, uh, so he's the one you hassle if you uh, want to know why there isn't firmware done yet. Uh, but, uh, and if you want to help with the project, if you, it's, again, it's all open source. If, you, if you're interested in like, helping with firmware development and you don't mind getting a board that doesn't have working firmware on it, but you still think you can do something cool with it, let me know. I have something with me now, and we're making more prototypes in the lab on a weekly basis. We send free stuff out all the time. Uh, and so if you don't catch me here at the conference and you, you think that you should get free prototype hardware from the Great Fet Project, uh, go to greatskygadgets.com and, and send an email to our free stuff address and we'll get it to you. Oh, also, um, we don't have a formal uh, bug reporting uh, mechanism on our website, but uh, if anyone finds any interesting security vulnerabilities in Great Gadgets Project uh, and, um, and submits them to cheap bugs, uh, I will send you free hardware. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, how much? Uh, I don't really know yet, but it's going to be uh, probably uh, thirty or forty dollars, something like that. How does this compare to other products on the market, such as JPEG? Oh, good question. JTAGulator is a, a more specialized interface just for doing uh, JTAG. Uh, we will be implementing JTAG with GreatFet, um, but there will be some pros and cons. GreatFet will be much more flexible, capable of doing a lot more things. It also has a faster USB interface, uh, I think. And uh, But the JTAGulator has some nice features um, where there's already firmware to do uh, automated JTAG detection and uh, pin detect, pin out detection, and it also has some level shifting which we don't have on the Great Fet yet, but we'll probably make a level shifting neighbor that allows you to interface with a, like an unknown uh, voltage serial system, whether it's JTAG or UART or SPY or whatever. So it would it could be a replacement for JTAGulator if it has the right neighbor on it, um, but JTAGulator is out of the box a more specialized tool for that purpose. Boba Fett. Boba Fett? That's a good. That's a good question. That's pretty good. Actually, I was uh, speaking of speaking of uh, J Tagulator. I was thinking uh, the the danger of calling it Great Fett. Of course, my company's Great Scott Gadgets, so the Great Scott Gadgets Great Good Fett is Great Fett. Um, and if Travis doesn't like doesn't like it, well, you know, I'm not taking the five dollars back. Um, but uh, I, I always thought. Uh, you know, if if Joe decides that he wants to uh, make a competitor, he might come up with, out with a grand fet. Uh, I'd like to see that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, no more time for questions. Sorry, I droned on too long. Oh. Can you toss me my bench?